speak. She's online. There she is there. Um, but she's online to share with us a little bit tonight too. Yes, so hi, my name is Bella and I am the on the current youth board. Um, so in Millennium Kids, the youth make the decisions about their projects and about MK itself. Kids come up with their project ideas and MK helps them get funding and find a mentor. All the decisions are made by the kids within Millennium Kids. We've had hundreds of youth come to MK with an idea and Millennium Kids help them make their projects real. Millennium Kids has started using the 17 UN Global Goals for Sustainable Development as a starting point for all projects. We've been working with hundreds of young people in their local community to develop 1,000 actions for the planet, a youth-driven youth sustainable initiative. Within 1,000 Action for the Planet, we have eight different issues that kids think are the most important at the moment. These are water, because water is life. We need access to clean water for drinking and food production. Animals, because Australia has the highest native animal extinction rate in the world. Air and transport, because air pollution is making, in the cities, is making people sick. The more roads we have, the less green spaces we have. Our cities are getting hotter because we have too many roads, too many car parks and not enough cool and not enough trees to cool the city. Waste, because plastic only starts degrading after 700 years and will only fully degrade after a thousand years. Energy, because everyone around the world is talking about transitioning to a low carbon economy to avoid significant climate change, but millennium kids are concerned that it isn't happening fast enough. Plants, because kids are concerned about habitat loss and poor development, where trees are destroyed for housing, on pr private property and on street streetscaping. Climate change, because millennium kids have been worried about climate change and global warming since 1996 when we first started asking kids the big issues. Climate change was always number one. And peace and lifestyle, because kids are anxious about their future. Millennium kids want a peaceful world where we can work together and look after the planet, side by side with different cultures. Every project we do fits into these issues. Like Alicia said, it's been 25 years since our first team of kids met up in Eastbourne and came back to Australia. Now we would like the young people in Eastbourne to tell us about what they think the big issues are and what their visions for the future are. First up, we have Heidi and Ethan from Lang Langye Primary Academy. Hi, my name is Ethan. The things I have loved about my area is that there's space, people are loving, safe and caring. And the things I have not liked about my area is that there's loads and loads of litter. I've noticed random stuff appearing in bushes and no one seems to be caring about the environment. I found this all in one walk and there's a shoe in the bag. Where the litter can end up is unpredictable. So it could end up in an animal stomach and in the sea. You could make an ocean display to educate people and um, to help other countries that have loads of litter. One of the ways to stop this are signs of no littering, more bins in public places and to give somebody a job or a homeless a job to give them the opportunity to earn money. In 50 years time I would like a clean planet. Hi my name is Heidi. What I like about the community is they're caring and they donate food to the food bank and our school loves our cooking lessons. What I don't like is that they're wasting food every day and um, what makes me mad is that people are cooking dinners for them and they think, oh, that spare food doesn't matter, we'll just leave it. And then they throw it in the bin and then that goes to waste, which can hurt the environment. And um, I'm going to change food waste by maybe making a cooking competition between schools using parts of food that would usually be thrown away, like black bananas into banana smoothie, or stale bread made into bread and butter pudding or cinnamon bread sticks. Um, our cooking teacher, Miss Harwood, um, would love to have food donated to schools, hospitals, and care homes from restaurants. 
and restaurants and it would be better if restaurants had less options on menus because they buy loads of food which then goes to waste. In 50 years time I'd like the earth to stop wasting foods. Thank you. All right, thank you so much for that, Ethan and Heidi. They were some amazing ideas. All right, so next we, has, we have Isabel from West Rise Primary School. Um, hello, my name's Annabelle from West Rise, no, from West Rise Junior School in Eastbourne. And I have two main concerns about environment and pollution, and they are recycling and waste, basically. Um, I know there's far too much pollution in the world. We're still relying too much on fossil fuels to power our factories, vehicles and homes. We need to move towards mass use of renewable sources of energy, like solar panels and wind farms. We should also be encouraging people to shop more locally to reduce the transport impact of the food we eat. Waste is another big issue that I'm worried about. I know that supermarkets here in the UK have made efforts to reduce their packaging but still it's sometimes impossible to buy food that's not wrapped in plastic. We need to move towards all food packaging being either removed where it isn't needed or being recyclable. I've also noticed that it's not always easy to recycle because there is not always recycling facilities nearby. For example, bins in public places do not often have separate sections for recyclable items, which means everything gets sent to landfill. I'm also concerned about the use of plastics, especially plastic water bottles. The use of these is a huge problem, and sometimes they're the only real, but sometimes they're the only real option for people. Like in places where tap water is unavailable or undrinkable. I also think that we need to find ways to encourage people to eat sustainably. People should be eating less meat, as the environmental impact of producing meat is so huge. We also need to find ways to encourage that other methods of farming are sustainable. Good. Thank you so much for that, Annabelle. I definitely agree. We definitely have the same kind of issues here in Australia with recycling. Um, all right, so next we have uh, Clara and Otto from Gildred House School. Hello, I'm called Clara and I think some of the food issues are that um, there are lots of individual cars and that lots of, there are like, there, whenever I see cars driving around, there are lots of the time there's only one person in it. And I feel like there could be much more. And there, that means that there's more cars and there's more um, CO2 going into the atmosphere. And I think to reduce that, we could have more public transport and the more people would be able to be in one and vehicle instead of a lot of being lots of individual cars driving around. And I've also uh, made this sheet here. Um, and it's, it says reality um, and what I think the world should be like. And I think um, that um, humans should have a better relationship with animals. And I think um, that, yeah. So whenever I go onto YouTube or something, and there's always a there's sometimes always an ad about like a cars, and then I'm and then I'm always like, well, we already have loads of cars in the world. Why do we need more? Uh, but I mean, all cars are kind of the same. I mean, we don't need better cars, but because yeah, we just don't need better cars. <sighs> I agree. Thank you so much, guys. Okay, next we have Bella and sum up from Cavendish School. Yeah. Hello, I'm Summer and I'm Bella. And what we really wanted to do was get young people reconnecting and understanding the world around them with nature. Um, we have lots of issues, obviously, worldwide. And one of the main things we wanted to get done was um, 
was to stop things like littering. We see like in towns and parks, there's lots of litter everywhere. And it just means that when people um, come by to use that area or to sit down and enjoy it, um, they can't really because it's all over the place. So we really wanted to introduce um, obviously bins, but also more recycling bins um, to get people to just sort of be on board with it and understand it more. And also to just sort of influence people to pick up uh, waste when they see it on the floor. And I think a big improvement for my area would be more wind turbines. There are wind turbines, but I think it'd be better to have more of them, like on the seaside, as it is quite windy there. However, people have complained about them, which I think is quite unnecessary about the view, which is quite aggravating, as they are really helpful with energy and they help with reducing fossil fuels as well. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, girls. I definitely agree. We definitely need more wind turbines here in Western Australia as well. All right, and finally, we have Millie from East, uh, Eastbourne College. Hi, yes. So Eastbourne in the 20th century became more of like a retirement town, but during the 21st century, more younger people and younger families came in. Um, one of the big problems with Eastbourne is that it's a really big town, so you can't really connect with anyone. Um, and there's a lot of poverty, like if you walk along the seafront, you usually see um, a lot of homeless people, which for me is really, really sad. So that's why I think we need to keep food banks open and also donate a much, a lot more to food banks. And I think also if we look at um, other projects and develop other projects, we can link people together and we can make our local environments much better. So, yeah. Yes, thank you so much for that, Millie. Um, I definitely agree. Global goal number 17 is partnerships for the goals, and that's what it's all about, making sure that everyone is connected. Um, so thank you so much to everybody for sharing their ideas, and we will now hand back to the Perth stage.